on August 21st, 2017, parts of the United States will experience a total solar eclipse. This is an unusual astronomical event. The moon will completely cover the sun for a few brief minutes. Total solar eclipses are very rare. At a given location, they only occur approximately every 400 years. Today, solar eclipses are just a fascinating phenomenon. But in times past, they took on a very different significance. They were seen as omens from the gods, bearing a weighty portent of doom. On one occasion, an eclipse even put an end to a war. On May 28, 585 BC, the Lydians and Medes were engaged in fierce fighting. This was the sixth year of war between them. Each was from a different side of Anatolia, which is modern-day Turkey. As the battle stretched on into evening, both armies were surprised to see the sun suddenly darkening. Both believed that it was a message from the gods, that they were displeased by the strife. But the Lydians and Medes laid down their arms. They swore to end the long war and solidified the peace by giving a Lydian princess to marry the king of the Medes. This is one of the earliest events in recorded history to which we can set an exact date, as we can calculate when that eclipse took place. Eclipses are valuable to historians as they give us an event that we can use to correctly date ancient chronologies. Ancient historians recorded that this eclipse that stopped the war was actually predicted by Thales of Miletus, a Greek mathematician. Modern astronomers say that it was just a lucky guess based off of a faulty theory. If he really could accurately predict the location of an eclipse, then his knowledge of astronomy was far more advanced than anyone else in his time as total solar eclipses are very difficult to predict. Part of the difficulty is because of the width of the shadow of the moon. It is less than 200 miles. Predicting one with any degree of accuracy requires a detailed knowledge of the varying speed of the moon and the shape of its orbit. Records of past solar eclipses are of little help as the time between them in a given location can vary widely. Around the same time as Thales, the Babylonians were dedicated to the study of astronomy. They interpreted both lunar and solar eclipses as bad omens from the gods. They made the revolutionary discovery of the sorrow cycle, that eclipses often repeat themselves every 18 years, 11 days, and 8 hours. For hundreds of years, they predicted solar eclipses and achieved a remarkable degree of accuracy. All of the solar eclipses they predicted took place somewhere on Earth, though the times were off by hours and many of the eclipses could not be seen from Babylon. Even though the Babylonians understood that eclipses were cyclical and somewhat predictable, they still feared them. They thought they were regularly sent by the gods, and when a predicted eclipse did not take place, it was a god showing them mercy. When the astrologers believed that an eclipse would soon take place, a prisoner or pauper would be put on the throne in place of the true king. The substitute king was given a complete court with a queen and bodyguard. About a hundred days after the eclipse, the substitute king would be executed and the true king restored to his throne. The purpose of this ritual was to have the substitute receive the misfortune of the eclipse's bad omen. The astrologers also had the real king perform elaborate rituals in hopes to dispel the bad omen or even turn it favorable. Ancient records seem to show that only the Greeks, Babylonians, and Chinese had enough astronomical knowledge to attempt to predict solar eclipses. Other cultures like the Egyptians or Mayans may have, but no record survived for us to know if they did. By 8 BC, the Chinese were having some success in predicting them. They improved over time, but still had mixed success. At times, astronomers who failed in their predictions paid with their lives for their mistake. Eventually in the 1600s, they switched over to Western astronomical methods as they found them more reliable. By then, European astronomers were making maps to predict the path of solar eclipses. Even when European scientists were getting much better at predicting when and where a solar eclipse would occur, Europeans still saw them as an evil omen. This was reinforced with the memory of Henry I, King of England, who sailed from England to Normandy during an eclipse. His death in Normandy was considered a fulfillment of the bad omen. For the 1715 total eclipse of the sun, Edmund Halley, after whom Halley's Comet is named, made the most accurate prediction in history up to that point in time. He drew maps of where he believed the eclipse would be visible using Isaac Newton's new theories. These maps were accurate to within 4 minutes and 20 miles. Today, with far more sensitive measuring equipment, a better understanding of the solar system, 
and the massive power of computers, much of the mystery has been taken out of the eclipse. Accurate maps can be made of the path of the eclipse many years into the future, and apps on your phone can tell you what to look for down to the second. It is an amazing sight that people travel around the world to study or just experience. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also visit www.discerninghistory.com for more videos and other resources.